So the reason that we fit big large radiators with heat pumps is of course because we want to lower the flow temperature but that's not the only reason. Today I want to talk a little bit about system volume and of course larger radiators can accommodate more water so there's more thermal capacity and that brings a lot of benefits. So why do we need to think about system volume? Well these are some of the benefits. You can decrease the cycling because you're increasing the thermal mass so you're kind of smoothing out those those dips and troughs and ons and offs and everything you're increasing the kind of thermal inertia and you decrease the defrosts or potentially you can help with the defrost cycle through having sufficient volume so if i have a quick look on my own uh, heat pump for example i have a seven kilowatt valent aerotherm plus and below five degrees we know that that's when the likelihood of defrosting increases quite considerable so i don't have a backup heater and so my uh, minimum system required for defrosting it is 55 litres, which is quite interesting. And of course, that's at a certain temperature. There's many variables, but that gives us a little ballpark. And a lot of people look at the manual and they go, oh, 55 litres, that's all I need for a 7 kilowatt Aerotherm Plus. But they can quickly run into problems if they are at that sort of level. And so we have heard of this death spiral in and, you know, end of the world scenarios. But remember that this is an absolute minimum of 55 litres. The actual recommended volume for the best operation for a 7 kilowatt unit is closer to 180 to 200 litres. So three to four times the minimum required amount for a valent heat pump is what you really need for it to work really well and that really really can help with defrost and it's so important not to zone to not to close trvs and not to lower underfloor heating stats be, especially when it gets really cold because you're reducing your system volume and that can really affect how your defrost is happening and potentially it could slow down defrost but also it could increase the the rate at which defrosting needs to occur because your system volume is so small okay so how do we know if we've got enough system volume so there's a couple of methods but today I'm just going to look at the two there's one that's like a rule of thumb how to estimate it and then a, a very quick and easy way to calculate it of course the best method is to drain your whole system check your water meter and then power up your water main and fill the system through the fill-in loop and then go and check your water meter and then you can know exactly how big your system is um, very accurately but here's the the rough uh, rule of thumb one so um, I'm just going to roughly tell you that for a panel radiator it should be seven liters per panel used and that isn't just the water that is contained in the radiator but that's because of pipe work as well and this rule of thumb is for the typical 15 mil um, 15 mil pipe work go into the radiators now of course if you've got a double panel you know deep radiator then of course you can double that figure so you'd have 14 uh, liters per radiator for example anyway that works for me in this way because i've got 13 double panel radiators and then i've got one single panel radiator so i've got 27 panels times that by seven liters it's 189 liters on top of that, I've got a 45 litre buffer tank, which helps me with system volume. So that brings my total to 234 litres. Now let's try and calculate it and see how that compares with this rule of thumb calculation. So, oh, you're sick of me saying this. Like and subscribe if you can. Great, thanks. On to the next one. Uh, this is a little table, and this is from Stellrad, so big manufacturer um, that lots of people will be familiar with. You can look up other charts, but this goes to show you that per meter of a single panel radiator or per meter for a two panel radiator you can see if it's 600 uh, millimeters high standard height then it's 6.6 .6 liters of water that goes into a one meter wide by 600 meter tall radiator i hope i've explained that clearly but using this table you can then go and calculate what you what your actual capacity is with your radiators so here's mine 
These are all my radiators on the left hand side, what type they are. So you can see I've got one single panel there. Uh, calculating the rail one, I had to look at a, a different technical document to get an idea. And then the height of them, most of them are, well, there is no most of them actually. There's a mix there, 750, 700, 450, 1800. Um, and so you can do the calculations anyway. And this shows my capacity per radiator, not including any pipe work. So I've got a capacity of 91 litres 91.71 litres okay and that's of course if I don't disable any of those turn off any valves or TRVs or anything so my capacity is then 91.71 for the radiators 45 litres for the buff tank and now calculating your pipe work it may be difficult luckily for me when the air source heat pump was installed the floors came up, I took loads of pictures, a few videos, so I know the pipe runs, I know where the 22 mil main uh, route was and then where it splits off into 15 mil and 10 mil. So I can get a very, uh, very good measurement and calculation of my pipe work capacity. Now to do that, you will need to use tables like these, you can find them everywhere. Finding it for 10 millimeter was a bit more difficult, but we did find one in the end. And you can see that one meter of the 28 mil pipe work has 616 milliliters. So uh, quite a considerable amount. So maybe those long pipework runs from a heat pump to a home, maybe they're not such a problem after all if they can boost our system volume. I don't know, an interesting thought for the installers and engineers to think about. Um, here's my pipework capacity. Once again, these are all the radiators here. This is the pipework that runs to them. That's how long the pipework is. And then that equates to how much capacity there is. Of course, you can see my primary runs 13 and a half litres in the 28 mil primary pipework. And that one was super easy to measure. So I know it's very accurate. Some of these other, uh, other ones I've kind of erred on the side of caution. So this is a concern conservative estimate of 36.645 litres of water capacity in my pipework. So that brings us now to radiators 91.71, buffer tank 45 litres, pipework 36.6 a total of 173.3. Now, what was the recommended for a, uh, well, before we get into the recommended for a valent uh, heat pump, we estimated 234 litres and my total came at 173.3. So if we're using these rule of thumbs to measure, we are probably, uh, on, we're probably going to the wrong side. We want more system volume for our heat pump to run really optimally and efficiently. And so, the, and this estimate is for a conventional system, not with a buffer tank and not with 28 mil primaries. So it's way off once you start adding those in. Mine, perhaps my system volume is up to 10% more, but I've really done my best to measure the pipe work very accurately and to get as close as I possibly can. So, um, my the recommended for a valent seven kilowatt is probably 180 to 200 liters so i am kind of uh hesitant to remove a buffer tank and a system like this that is adding volume of course it can be re-piped and re-plumbed as a volumizer and still give me that 45 liters but this just goes to show another reason why we shouldn't be oversizing heat pumps because the larger ones require more system volume now if we for example look at the 12 kilowatts aerotherm plus that has a minimum system volume of triple what the 7 kilowatt does. So it goes from 55 litres up to 150 litres. So the difference between a 7 kilowatt heat pump and a 10 kilowatt heat pump or a 12 kilowatt heat pump, they're both the same minimum system volume, is quite substantial and it's quite significant. So thank you for watching. I hope this has been something helpful. Once again, if you're not with Octopus Energy, I don't know what you're doing and where you've been. Maybe you want to put in the comments and let me know why you're not with Octopus Energy. I hope this little snapshot into system volume is helpful for you, whether you're planning your system or whether you're trying to understand why you're struggling so much when it gets into that that horrible window of between zero degrees and four degrees that the 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 frequency of defrost cycles seems to ramp up quite considerably have a look on heatpumpmonitor.org you can see how it's affecting systems on there my system doesn't seem to be affected as badly as some other systems i wonder if that's something to do with the system capacity that i have here I don't know. Let me know in the comments your thoughts. Hope it's been helpful. You'll see me again very shortly in the future. Like, comment, subscribe. Farewell.